What, what are you looking at? What did you come here to see? A prophet? <laughs> yes. Yes, that's what I am, a prophet. A prophet of Yahweh. Not that I ever wanted to be anything but a prophet in these days uh, was too dangerous. But he said he would make me like a fortress against my own people. He would strengthen me. And look at me here in, in Egypt, dragged here by my own people. I didn't want to hear the message. I didn't want to proclaim it. He, he, he told me there was no hope, no hope for Jerusalem. I didn't believe it. I had to see for myself. And so I went to the capital city. Surely somewhere there are people who are righteous. I, I was bargaining with God, like Abraham bargaining for Sodom. I, I thought there must be uh, priests, surely, surely, in the, in the temple. The priests are righteous. And so I went to the temple and I saw them offering sacrifices to Baal, to, 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 to that non-God. I couldn't believe it. I, I ran from the place screaming. I, I, I searched. There must be someone, a, uh, an ordinary man, that man. He, he, he had just taken vows. His head was cleanly shaven. You, you where did you come from? Where, what vows have you made? Where, where have you been? He told me he had been in the valley of Hinnom. Hinnom, that's a place of human sacrifice. You are no Israelite, I said. By Yahweh, I am, he declared. He used the name. He used the name and it meant nothing to him. I, 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 I didn't know what to think. Who, who possibly would be righteous? Who, who could save Jerusalem? The new king? The new king, Jehoiakim? Perhaps he was righteous. He was a son of Josiah. Uh, Josiah, in whom we had placed so many hopes. Josiah, a descendant of David, who had cleaned out the temple. He had, he had torn down the altars in the, uh, in the, out in the, the countryside. We had placed so much hope in him. But when he rode out to see Pharaoh Necho of Egypt, I was terrified for him. And when they brought his body back, bleeding and limp. People gave up. They despaired. There's no hope. God has given up on his covenant with us. There's no point in putting one of his sons on the throne. But the priest insisted, no, no, it's a, it's a, it's a covenant. We must, we must put a descendant of David on the throne. And so they put Jehoahaz on the throne. <laughs> Hapless Jehoahaz. Oh yes, he was king for three months. And then the Egyptians came and took him away, replaced him with his brother Jehoiakim. Oh yes, he, he kept us from danger from Egypt, but only by vigorously taxing his own people. So I was there that day when he was, when he came into the temple area for the coronation. But people were so excited, they were giddy with, with uh, excitement that maybe this was the one. The trumpets were blurring, people were shouting, and as he came into the courtyard, and then as the priest came forward with the oil to anoint him, everything grew silent. I saw what he was wearing. His festal robes, his gleaming jewelry, the Ankh of Ra. The, the crescent of Asherah, all the symbols of the non-gods, and then, then there was that sound in my head. I did not want to speak. I didn't want to say a thing, but I found myself shouting from the walls, Oh, Israel, why do you abandon your God? Why do you turn to Egypt? This temple will be like the house of Shiloh. You you will be a curse to the nations. Oh, why, Israel, do you abandon your God? Why do you drink from the Nile? By then they had taken me down from the wall on which I was standing. They dragged me before the priests who were furious with me. 
Why do you say these things against Jerusalem? Why do you say that this temple will be like Shiloh? You deserve to die. They began to spit on me. I expected violence to follow, but then there was a change, a change in the sound of the crowds. The judges were coming. Judges. Fawning cronies of the royal house they were. They, they came and drew up their robes and asked what were the charges. The priests would have had me killed. They were intent on it, and, and it might have happened, uh, but someone remembered Micah, Micah of Morasheth. He had said the same things about Jerusalem, and Hezekiah had not put him to death. And so they released me. I think some of the officials were hesitant to put to death a, a prophet of the Lord. They put me into the care of Ahikam. He was a priest, but he was one who had brought the scrolls to, jo to Josiah. Even he warned me, well, you must not say anything bad about the king. He, he will not hear it. My life's been endangered so many times. I've, I've been th I've been thrown into a, into a dry well. I've been put in stocks. It would have been better for me if I had not been born. Why didn't they kill me the, 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 the instant I was I was birthed? I've tried to warn them. The, the, these people who think that the, the, the temple is somehow magical, that it will protect them. Oh, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. There was not magic enough to protect them from Nebuchadnezzar. When Jehoiakim died, Nebuchadnezzar made his way to to take over the city. The, the, the new king, Jehoiachin, he was terrified. He had no idea what to do. When Nebuchadnezzar came into the city, there was no stopping him. They all hid in the temple, but that didn't stop him. He came in, he took them all. He took the nobles, the royal house, the, the Jehoiachin, his children, and the, the, the loot, the, the, the goods, the beautiful items in the temple. They took them all. Nothing stopped him. So for a second time, I saw a foreign power place a descendant of David on the throne. He was a brother to Jehoiakim. They, they named him Zedekiah. And for a while there was some hope that there would be peace, that he would serve the Babylonians and not endanger our city. But then he got it into his head that somehow he would lead Jerusalem and Judah to restore the kingdom of Israel. He even entertained a delegation of representatives of the little petty kingdoms around us that thought they could form a coalition to go up against Babylon. Oh, what lunacy. How surprised they were when I, when I broke into their meeting wearing, wearing a yoke on my neck and declaring to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I created this world. I created the nations and the people and the animals, and I will give it all to whomever I please. I have chosen Nebuchadnezzar and placed it all in his hands, and even the wild animals will obey him. But they paid no attention. They didn't listen to me. No one, no one believed me. Even Ahikam began to doubt when I talked about the utter destruction of Jerusalem. There's no hope. There's no hope for this generation. They are stiff-necked, and they will not turn back to their to their God who has been their hope all along. Oh, it will not happen in my lifetime, but one day the covenant will not be on 
law written on scrolls. It will be in their hearts. They will not need someone like me, a, a prophet, to tell them about God. They will not need priests to perform ceremonies. They will, they will not even need kings. They will know the Lord. No one will have to ask another, tell me about Yahweh. But that day is not this day. That day, is, I don't know when it will come. On this day, I languish here in Egypt. Oh, they say, my people, Yahweh will rescue us. He, he will come for us. But I know that won't happen. He has said that we will die. And the words of the Lord surely must come true. Well, there. You wanted to hear from a prophet. There, now you know a word from a prophet. So leave me now, will you? Leave me alone. <laughs>